and let the people say, Amen. Amen. Welcome to Holy Cross Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday, especially after the last few days we've had. We're glad that you made it here. If you're worshiping with us for one of the first times, we especially welcome you here in this place, or if you found us online, we're glad that you, uh, you made your way to us. We are a church that belongs to the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Um, we are also a reconciling in Christ congregation, which means that we celebrate all of God's diversity. And we welcome you here into this place, no matter where you come from, the color of your skin, who you love, or you paying attention? How much or little is in your pocket? <laughs> we are glad that you're here because we are all God's children. So welcome to this place. We pray that your spirit will be filled today um, as we abide in uh, Christ. We have some news. Um, I had the pleasure uh, this uh, weekend of um, being at the Synod Assembly with both Erlene Bowling and Tad Overstreet. And um, uh, I'm gonna invite Erlene to come up and share some very important news uh, for us. But uh, this was the spirit at work this weekend, and we thank you for that opportunity to come and uh, to, to uh, represent you at our uh, Synod Assembly. Should be on. Gordy's coming. If that one's on. Let's try this one. I think I'm on. It is with great joy and a real privilege to let you know that on the fifth ballot, the Reverend Megan Johnston Alabuni was elected and called as the new Bishop-elect for the Rocky Mountain Synod. It was a joy to be at that assembly. Megan is a hometown girl. She comes from Colorado. She, was, uh, she studied at um, Iliff School, and she studied in Chicago, and she studied at Cal Lutheran. Um, she and her husband, Gabby, served at Trinity Lutheran in Fort Collins, and then they were called to missionary positions and they became country coordinators for young adults in global mission in Jerusalem and the West Bank. And she is now, I have to look at it <coughs> to remember which one. She is the pastor for, um, all right, where is it on my paper here? Um, the the church in Jerusalem in the West Bank, the Lutheran Church in Jerusalem in the West Bank. Um, I'm gonna take just a moment of privilege to share with you just a tiny bit about our process. I came into the assembly knowing all eight of the folks who had submitted their resumes. And so discernment was really tough. And I came to assembly still not sure who I was going to vote for in the ecclesiastical ballot. And I kept asking for the Holy Spirit to show up, and in my mind, she was really quiet. She was still really quiet after we had done through the ecclesiastical ballot and were down to the top eight people. And I kept trying to listen, I thought, to the Holy Spirit, but wasn't hearing anything. After the third ballot, when we got to three people, and we had listened to the wonderful bishops from Region 2. That's our bishops in California and in Arizona, Grand Canyon Synod. They each spoke. I began to realize the Holy Spirit was speaking. I just wasn't listening and looking with the right eyes. I was still trying to discern what I knew about these folks rather than calling really on the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you, 
the Holy Spirit blew through that assembly hall following the third ballot. And when we came to the fourth and fifth ballots, it was amazing. It switched who was in leading. The Holy Spirit had spoken to a lot of us. So let me assure you that we have called absolutely the right person. God was at work and told us who it was that's to lead us forward, following the wonderful 12 years that Bishop Jim led us forward. We're now going on into the future. So thank you. Why don't you just stay up there and do the Moravian Daily Text? I can do that. Thank you. It was an indeed a spirit-filled um, time for everyone in the assembly. We had just short of 500 um, representatives from our surrounding congregations. Yes, it was amazing. And every time, let me tell you, every time one of the bishops spoke, Pastor Libby leans over and says, I want to call him. I want to call her. <laughs> so you know how wonderful those colleagues are that are going to support um, Pastor Megan as she moves forward in her work. So here, where the heck are we? The fifth Sunday after Easter. The watchword for the week, Jesus said, abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it ab abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. It's from John 15. All right, there's more here than there is on my phone. Um, from the Psalm 86, God, revive each congregation, be our center and our goal. Help us join in adoration. Oh, restore us, make us whole. God exalted Jesus Christ even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth, and under the earth and in every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, from Philippians 2. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for your guidance in aligning our hearts to love you and to love others as ourselves. We pray for the strength to love you with every fiber of our heart and soul. Help us to understand that our love for our neighbors is our truest expression of love we have for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand and join me at the font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. When you hear, look, here is water, you respond. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep water and became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The art carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. Into a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love. 
freeing us to live as an Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Please pray with me. Oh God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in our resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. God speaks to us in scripture reading, preaching, and song. This is a reading from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. And if you would like to read along with the scripture, it is found in your pew Bible on page 129. So, led by the Spirit, Philip encounters an Ethiopian official who is returning to his African home after having been to Jerusalem to worship. Philip uses their encounter to proclaim the gospel to him, and upon coming to truth and faith in Jesus, he is baptized by Philip. A reading from Acts chapter 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. The scripture tells us this is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading from the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to the chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I? unless someone guides me. And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? for his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus Christ. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water, what is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up and out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. this morning comes from the 15th chapter of St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. We're going to begin with the first verse if you want to follow along in your, in your Bibles. You know this. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. 
Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me it is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Kids, come on down. <clears throat> So it's springtime, right? And what's coming up out of the ground? Flowers and new growth, some trees. What's growing on the trees? More flowers and fruit's going to start coming up. Come on up here, Luke. I'll, sit over here. I'll stand over here. So why do you think they're doing that? What, what, what's happening? They're reproducing, but why now? Ah, uh, April's the time. Yep, April showers. We get a lot of rain, and in Colorado, we get still snow, right? Yeah. And the snow melts, and it goes into the ground, right? And it's all nice and wet and, and nurtures those roots deep within. So I want you to all stand up. Can you stand up Look for me? So you like going to stand up? Okay, you see Dad? Good. Well, I'm glad you stood up so you can see Daddy, right? Yeah. I know, right? No. So here we go. I want you to show me what it looks like to be uh, a good, strong, sturdy plant. Show me what that looks like. One that's filled with lots of water and it's growing. Yeah, it might be like that or it might be like this. It's straight. Okay, so show me what it looks like when that same plant is wilted. <laughs> I got a lot of those around my house right now. The plants are kind of looking at me like, are you going to give me some water soon? And I'm like, I will when I get to it. Yes. So when they're like this, what are they missing? Water. water and or, or if they're in the shade, they're missing sunlight. Absolutely. Though all those things nurture the plants and the trees in our world, right? And even the air, if it's clean air, helps them to grow strong, right? How about you? How about you? How are you feeling today? Are you feeling a little wilty? Or are you feeling a little, are you feeling strong? You're kind of in the middle, right? Like you're... So, Luke... I think you're looking pretty strong today. Can you show me your strong self? You show us strong. Yeah. Okay, we can sit down and still be strong, right? Yeah. So here's the thing. When Jesus says to us, I want you to stay connected to me. I want you to be close to me because when you're close to me, it's like a vine and the branches. And the branches get a lot of nourishment from the vine. But if the branches aren't connected to the vine, what will they do? Yeah, they'll, they'll wilt over and they'll die. So how do we stay connected to Jesus? We have aunties bring us to church. Yes, we do. And we go to Sunday school and we learn the stories of Jesus and the Bible and the people that uh, loved Jesus and came before Jesus. Today we just learned that he walked on water. He walked on water today. It was an awesome story. What did you learn from it? If you have faith in God, you can do amazing things, right? So when we are connected to Jesus, when we hear the stories of Jesus, when we come here, when we share in our families and with others about Jesus... 
we help them to become strong. So that means we bear fruit. In the story for today, I'm guessing that the fruit that was on the vine and the branches were grapes. grapes. Yeah, I know. Wow. Are you ready for this? This is the fruit. So when we talk about bearing fruit, being strong and connected to Jesus, do you want two? Why don't you just take the basket, the bag with you back there, and you can have more if you want. But here's the thing. When we're connected to Jesus, we do all of those things that show love to Jesus' world, and that's the fruit that comes out of being a strong plant connected to Jesus. Can we pray? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me so that I can share your love with others and bear much fruit. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Oh, I didn't even show you my plant. It's probably because it's somewhere between wilted and watered and dead. Yeah. Smells nice though, it's basil. So I've, um, I've been around a few wineries, a few vineyards. I'm guessing you have too, right? I've learned a few things about vines and branches. One of the things that I've learned if you walk down the rows of a vineyard and you look at the vines and the branches, can you tell them apart? Not really. You can't tell the vine and the branches apart. I've also learned that about two feet up, so they have a trunk, and about two feet up what they do is they spread like a prong, like two branches, or two yeah, the vine goes into like two branches and then everything else sort of swirls around. So it's like one big swirly mass of vines and branches all together. And then they, what they do is they try to weave them up so that they hang them up on the wire. And Why do they do that? Why do they try to get them up to hang on a wire? To support what? the fruit that is going to grow on them eventually, yeah. I also learned that the branch can't survive without the vine, right? So when you're looking at it, you think this is all one vine, but the vine grows the branches that bear the fruit. So if the branch is not connected to the vine, there is no fruit. And the branch gets its nourishment from the vine, right? And I learned that there's all of this, you know, if like you could see underneath the ground, there's like this massive, um, this massive undertaking underground where the roots are growing deep and spreading out and, and the water and the nutrients from the soil are being soaked up into these roots that then come up through the trunk and out through the vines and to the branches until we have these beautiful plump grapes or fruit that comes out of them. I also have learned that when you're starting out with a vineyard, a young plant, a young vine, <clears throat> that they do not let the branches grow on the vine for three years. And I'm guessing some of you people that know more than I know, know why. allowing them to mature, to grow strong so that they can hold the fruit, that they can bear strong and, and plump fruit. So they'll cut them back. They will prune them back. Now, on Wednesday night when we talked about that, I said in my um, small group, I said, I, I have such a hard time doing that. 
And I have such a hard time pruning because it takes me a lot of work to just get it to grow. And so when I see it green or prospering, I think that it's lovely and I just want it to grow when actually perhaps it should be pruned back so that it can grow more full and prosper then. So you're probably catching on right away that <clears throat> growing and planting and harvesting are challenges for me, but I don't give up. I keep doing it. So we have this story that Jesus lays before us today. The vineyard owner, the farmer, is God in this story that Jesus tells. He is the owner. He manages. He takes care of the vineyard so hold that put a pin in that hold that just for a moment because the vine in this story is jesus right so jesus is the one that grows strong and sturdy and and, and so that the branches can grow from the vine and produce the fruit but here's the thing in all of that pruning and and cutting off the dead branches and the burning of them I am acutely aware that when we hear scripture, much of the way we hear scripture is because of where we are at, the context in our own lives, the stuff we're going through, the stuff that's filling our hearts and our, our minds and the context that we're in. So sometimes we might hear this as like, oh, you know, I'm, uh, I don't under, I, you know, I'm just woe, woe to the one who is being pruned and uh, and, uh, and burned and cut back. But what we also said on Wednesday night when we, when we pondered over this, when we dwelled over this text, is that for life to happen, what also has to happen? Death, right? And so if you take this image of this God in this vineyard, this God is preparing this soil. This God is pruning the stuff that doesn't belong there, the, the, the dead stuff, and, and burning the stuff that, uh, it's so that the soil can be enriched, the environment can be enhanced, for which new life can come. So think about that in your own lives. Not necessarily the pruning of you, but the pruning that happens so that we can grow. The pruning that happens around us so that we can grow. I think there's some things that we can take away from this text today. I'm going to Try to keep them to three. I think the first one is understanding this intimacy between the vine and the branches, between God and Jesus and you and me. I think Jesus in this parable is indicating that he wants us to identify as closely as we can to the vine so that you cannot tell when God stops and we begin. Think about that in your own life. Would someone say that about you? I can't tell where God stops and you start. Because we are all one with the Father. That's what's happening in the book of Acts, in this story of Acts with Philip and the eunuch. I love this story because Philip went and did his thing. He's, you know, in the temple. He could do that. Well, the eunuch, as we know, the eunuch couldn't do what Philip did. The eunuch was outside of the temple. He wasn't welcome in the temple because he was not like them. But he's so curious, right? So you have Philip, who must have been so connected to the vine that when the Holy Spirit said, go catch that guy on his chariot, Philip got up and went. I love the, the message. It says, get up and go. He got up and went, and he ran down the road to catch this guy. Have you ever done that? It's like when somebody leaves their purse on the counter and they go out to the car, you're like running after them. But have you ever ran after someone because you had to tell them about this good news because the Holy Spirit sent you. 
Philip was connected to the vine. He was connected in such a way so that when the Spirit called upon him, he got up and he went. Now, the other part of it is the eunuch. Eunuch wanted to be connected like Philip was, right? The eunuch is sitting there reading through Isaiah, through the scriptures. He's reading about this suffering servant, and he's like, who is that? And Philip, filled with the Holy Spirit, connected to the vine, says, this is your God that loves you, even you, especially you. And then the eunuch, well, what's to prevent me from being baptized? Amen, Jesus. Amen. There is nothing that separates you from the love of God. And so you have one who is connected and one who wants to be connected. And together, together, they are the church. Better together. Right? Where have you heard that? Only about 50 times the last two days did we hear that we are better together. When we remain, when we abide in Jesus Christ, then our values, our dreams, our perspectives, our priorities, our desires are God's desires. When we stay connected to the vine, it's not our agenda, it is God's agenda. When we align ourselves with the vine, we were talking the other night about grafting. I don't know a whole lot about grafting, but my assumption about grafting is that there are two equal sides that that are prepared so that they can come together. Christy was telling me this. And they grow together as one. Wow, that's just an amazing thing to think about how we live and have our being with God, that God prepares God's self and we prepare and we are prepared to come together and grow as one. And when we align ourselves with the reign of God, my friends, God's preferred and promised future is then our preferred and promised future. Amen? Amen. So let's talk about that bearing fruit At the Synod Assembly, we were indeed reminded that we are better together. When we believe and accept that we need each other, then we what? We bear fruit and we are better together. When our love for God and each other is rooted in the vine, when we are connected in the vine, one with the vine, We are set apart, and the world will see that. The world will see that through thick and thin, we remain with God, and we are set apart, and we are better together. You know, in this text, Jesus appoints us to bear fruit. I'm not sure if the word is you. I think it's you. It um, challenges us challenges you to bear fruit. That word, the the you in that text is not me or you or you or you. It's us. Fluffy us. It's all of us together. So when Jesus calls us to bear fruit, he's not just saying one of you. He's telling all of us together to bear fruit. And so the last lesson that I want to grab from this text is that there is this cycle of bearing fruit, right? We all know that there is a planting season. That's right. Right now is spring and the kids are noticing that everything's coming up out of the ground. Can it stay up like that? Can it bear fruit all 365 days of the year? No. There are seasons. There are seasons of planting, there are seasons of growing, and there are seasons of harvesting and bearing fruit. So let's talk about sabbatical. Sabbatical is a part of our season of bearing fruit. Did you notice I said our? I'm the one that's leaving to go on sabbatical, but you are staying on sabbatical. Together, 
we will remain with the vine. But here's the thing. Sabbaticals, did you read my article? Because then I don't have to go over it, right? <laughs> if I didn't, go back and read it. We won't repeat it. But a sabbatical is a time for renewal, for rest, right? It's about gaining a new or different perspective on things that we've always seen or things that maybe we haven't seen for a while. And it's gaining a new way of doing that. So while I will be gone, you, and when I come back, you will still be the people of God. And you will still be the church. And you will be doing the work of the church like you've always done before. You have no idea. You probably don't ever stop to think about the fact that you are being the church. So when your pastor leaves this place, it's still going on. It's still going on. The church is still going on. Because why? You're connected to the vine. So I'm going to encourage you during sabbatical to take that time that you need to dwell in the word, to listen and pray with one another, and to hear where God might be calling us as Holy Cross into new beginnings, to new awareness, to new perspectives. You're going to be well cared for because you're going to be caring for each other. And you're going to be caring for God's world like you have always done before. And there's some treats along the way during sabbatical. The treats will be that some of you will be in the pulpit sharing your heart and what you know of your God with all of us. Some of you that have that gift of caring for one another will step up. And all of us together will listen more intently to each other and the needs that we have of the community. And we will be the church because you are the church. We are the church. We'll talk more each week about what sabbatical might look like for you and for me and for all of us. But I think it is an opportunity for us to dwell in God. And we do that because we are connected to the vine. Amen.
Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. After each prayer petition, we respond, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the church around the world, for all ministers and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and of all created things, for rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters, renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations that justice and peace may reign in you, God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are suffering ill and healing. Lord, we bring to you prayers for Lloyd, Bob, Marilyn, Merle, and for Melissa and a full recovery following a serious car accident. We pray for Otis and Pieta families at the death of Helena's cousin Don. We continue in prayer for Willie, for Dale, the Iona family, Esther, Susan, Dorothy, Chandra, Rex, Bob, Eric, Thea, John, Phil, Norma, Judy, and the Nyack family. We ask for your hand of mercy and grace to be upon the community and the world, for victims of gun violence, those who struggle for food, for shelter and sustainable employment, those displaced from their homes and countries, especially the influx of migrants into our community and those organizations that strive to assist them. We ask for peace among the nations, including Palestine, Israel, Myanmar, Iraq, Russia, Ukraine, Ethiopia, and South Sudan. And we ask your hand of grace and compassion upon the Native American communities. We remember in prayer, Holy Cross Council and Excellence in Leadership participants, Holy Cross Ministry Partners, and the Rocky Mountain Synod, and God of grace, hear our prayer. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share your love with the world, God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear us now as we offer prayer both aloud and in our hearts. We pray for Bishop-elect Megan Johnston Alabuni and for our Bishop Jim and for their leadership. We pray that your Holy Spirit would fill them uh, in this time of transition and all of our congregations of the Rocky Mountain Synod. The Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we lift up the family of Lois Knudsen this week as they celebrate her life and lay her to rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, I pray uh, these prayers that were given to us by the, um, the women in the congregation of new beginnings at our local women's correction facility. Hear these prayers, O Lord. My prayer is for my transgender daughter, that he find peace in his heart and allows himself to feel and know God's love for him. In God's name, amen. Please keep my family safe. Please help my husband and I to continue to grow closer despite the distance. And please help me to get home in May. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Please pray for my family, for my health, that I can get healthier by the day, 
and that my sobriety goes, uh, remains for me, that I don't lose my housing, let my son get out soon, and let him stay sober this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I pray for my wife, Erin, to get better from RSV, as well as for my brother to keep up his sobriety. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That my loved ones start to put their lives back together, as well as staying safe and sober. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And finally, please pray for my wife, Chris's lawyer, that he contacts her as soon as possible with an update on her release. Lord, we pray for this ministry of new beginnings and for Pastor Sam as she leads them, gives them hope, gives them a new beginning. Send your spirit upon them to bring them comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray with thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors. Help us, like them, to bear much fruit and to become your disciples. And at the last, bring us to that heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table. God of grace, hear our, our prayer. And into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. Share Christ's peace with one another.
Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at the table that we receive what we seek and follow your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. amen. Please stand as you are able and join me in the thanksgiving at the table. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let's celebrate this irrepressible life. Let's open our hearts to the joy and wonder of infinite possibility, of unquenched hope, of eternal resurrection. We celebrate, we raise our voices and our hearts in worship and thanksgiving to the God who lives, singing. Resurrection happened because Christ was first prepared to die. Defying death, he refused to release his hold on life and love. So now, as he encouraged us, we choose to remember so that we too can truly live. At supper on the night that he died, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to all of his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken, so that you may know life. And he said, Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the wine and blessed it. Then he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my blood, shed for, so that you may know life. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. So now, Lord of life, we share in this meal. We celebrate together and we remember you. And we will continue to do this until the resurrection has flooded the whole creation and the people say, Amen. Amen. May this bread and this wine become for us in this moment your life-giving body and blood. And may we who share this meal be joined with you as the vine and the branches are joined to one another. And with one another as the body united in resurrection life and sharing with all of creation in your eternal salvation. Amen. As we break this bread, we receive Christ's life. In all our diversity, in all our individuality, as we share this one loaf, we are one. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus first taught us in whatever love language is upon your heart and your tongue. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from the end. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see, for all are welcome at this table.
May this body and blood, may this bread and may this wine, may it fill you and sustain you in body, soul, mind, and strength so that you can continue to be who you've been created to be, branches that are connected to the vine. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever, amen. Few announcements for the day. Join us right after the service to stuff blessing bags in the Sunday school room right across the hall from the library. That's the one right over there, the large room. You can leave whenever you need to. Uh, we need some coffee hosts for the next two Sundays, and then after that, there are just a few that need filled through the summer. May the 4th be with you. The next men's group get-together is here next Saturday, May the 4th, at 4.30 in the morning down in Azel. This will be an interesting gathering as they have new people joining each time. They'll be listening to some stories around breakfast and explore future events. Uh, the May Voice came out digitally, and if you didn't get it in your email, please let us know so we can get that to you. Um, we do have a few hard copies in the back there, if that is your preferred form, but it's a lot of paper. So, um, if you can get it digitally, let's try to do that. I think that's all for announcements. Just a point of clarification that Lois Knudsen's memorial service is at Cross of Christ at 10.30, and then at 2.30, the family will travel down here for the inurnment in our columbarium. I do not think that that is a private um, time for them, um, so you're welcome to come. It will just be outside for a short while. But Wednesday nights, folks, come and be fed. Come and break bread together, dwell in the word, and break bread together, because we are better together. Do you can tell I just came from Synod Assembly? Amen. Please stand for the blessing. We know this. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen.